Latino viewers, I could actually just sit here and listen to the soundtrack because it's hauntingly beautiful. But that'd probably be kind of boring to just sit here and do that. So hey, welcome to Let's Play Citizen Sleeper Blind. Uh, this is an indie RPG survival dystopian sci-fi game that, for me at least, when I'm recording this, dropped quite recently. Um, available on GOG.com. That's where I picked it up. Uh, probably other places as well. Devs have to make a living, so if you like what you see here, consider picking it up. Um, I love me some post-apocalyptic stuff, whether it's Fallout or you know, something like this. So, yeah. I, I guess not post-apocalyptic. It's Well, tell us. Find out. I am the one true Renair, and probably did that all out of order. It's been a while since I've done one of these solo. But, uh, yeah. This is about as far as I got. So, we are a human mind dumped in a temporary robot body doing work. I guess we're called sleepers, and our job is to survive. As far as I know. Don't know what cryo is or what interface actions are, so hopefully the tutorial will be a bit more robust than, say, Elden Ring. Work with drones and high-precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Oh, look, look, little drone guy. Engineering interface. Hmm. Eh, let's see what else we got here. Extractor. Hard vacuums. That's pretty hardcore. No pun intended. Confident, self-sufficient, and a high level of endurance. Oh. Synth sunbathe dice action allows energy recovery at home. Photosynthetic skin. Okay. Machinist. Repairs and modifies automated system used in industrial resource extraction. Chance to gain random scrap. That sounds useful, but you know what? It defaulted to this one. Actually, who's got the coolest coat? You don't have any coat. Alright, I like it. Admiral style. Mm. I like the pattern of this one better. Operator it is. One day I'll get actual recording software so I can cancel stuff. Is there voice acting? No. Okay. Items. Cryo. Cryptocurrency. Stored in air wallet sticks of memory known as shit, so. No. Which I have not. Unknown. Where am I? Oh, am I gonna have to narrate all of this? Because that's gonna be bad for you guys. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect. The delay between thinking and feeling. Between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real. To be a person. To be in a body that was indisputably yours. No. Not the rugged guy, so let's reminisce. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach until you can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in, behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present, cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning, that with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Let's be empathetic. Let's remember the others. You remember there were ten of you. Ten that could no longer stand the indentured work, the routines, the slow decay. 
Ten whose belief in their promised future would slowly dismantle day by day, till they realized they had sold away everything that could and would ever matter. Ten that would escape, or at least die trying. Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reached any destination. Ooh, that's grim. That's all there is now. It's been a long time since you left, surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but even then your body has shut many of its systems down to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes, the cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from the rigor. Sound, too, everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light, white as the cold. Then softer and softer until the haze, in a haze, of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Okay. I'm gonna tweak the sound just a hair. There we go. Wait, was this complete tutorial to activate autosave? Yeah. So can I scroll here at all? No. All right, I got Drago's pragmatic salvager. I was about to say, he doesn't have a cool coat either, but I guess he's got a full-on jumpsuit. He looks like he's got these little drones, too. It has been a few hours since Drago has pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of a scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, Others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. Ooh, voices now. I don't know how good my old man voice is. Yeah, I might just go with this. So, sleeper, you all thawed yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frame has been better perseverance than Sub-Zero back. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his head set with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his sym symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. He struggled to read his expression beneath the tech. They have seen it lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. What happened to them? He ignores your question. I want to ask what made you do it. To sell yourself to a corporation? I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body? That's theirs now. And you're just... Software. A rogue emulation of vaguely possessing company property. You nod along. You remember biometrically citing the forms cold floor on your feet as you pattern into the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You are an offshoot, a copy. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours has fallen apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. As an arc wants to protect their property. But if it can't keep a hold of you, well, then no one can. You remember that too, at least rumors from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence. A 
built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them, and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see it soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using to storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet and nod. Alright, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Tutorial. Introduction. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, all caps, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to re- Ooh, current home. Great, I don't have to live in a container for the rest of my life. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Select locations by clicking the icon. Okay, well, wait, ooh, your character. First things first, let's have a look at me. Oh, no. So many things. Okay. Chance to gain cryo. Oh. Oh, minus one, so that's gonna... <laughs> Gotta dig my way out of the hole for endure. But it looks like everyone can get everything eventually. Because that's the photosynthetic sin. Or skin. <laughs> photosynthetic sin. That's a different game, viewers. Fission extractor was on there as well. Okay. Yeah, so. Overlap. Empty container. You're home for now. End cycle. Minus energy, minus condition. Really? Am I doing this? Okay, we'll put the back on. Alright. End cycle. steel walls. Yeah, take what you can get. You wake curled up in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Hmm. Survival. It's built a life. Maybe you did get lucky finding yourself here. Maybe here, on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. Before you can build anything, you need to learn to survive. Maybe if you could do that, to make a life for yourself. Dragos left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, the canister of water, the makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated power. Pow powder. Sadly, no good pronunciation skills were left in this container. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, Images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright, polygonal shapes, like angular suns, burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you finish drinking that they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can, and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Hey, okay, condition. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle. It can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. Is that death, or just now you have to fix this too? Flickering. Oh. Okay, so that's all. Oh god. Why have the feeling I'm already <laughs> overconfident with? Oh, I got plenty of those. No problem. You have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you are no longer 
Oh, good. So corporate pharmaceuticals are no longer a factor. Action dice. The start of each type, you can roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you have. Oh, that's going to snowball. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions. It must rest and recover them, ending the cycle. So I guess because I had that one bar, I get this die. Which is why this one is built. Right. Three, energy. Oh, looking good. We also need to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you'll have to find somewhere to get food and currency to buy it. Your energy seg depletes by two segments each cycle. If it becomes empty, you'll be starving, and your condition will deplete at a double rate. Okay. Sounds rough. All right, well... Dragos is stood in the corridor. Well, given how badly I'm mispronouncing things, I can't write. Dragos is stood in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset. In the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. The drone sits on his shoulder. Its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Not good. The drone chirps. Dragos nods. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not gonna chit-chat too long. You will enough to work? Work? Look, I'll be honest with you, sleeper. I didn't pull you out of that container out of the goodness of my heart. He looks away. With the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech. Some with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here. But I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll sleep you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Chits? These. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airwall cryo, isolated from the market. It's what we use to trade out here. He stuffs them back in a pocket. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can, and sleeper as well. He trails off. But things the way they are for me at the yard... He pauses. I need the help. Why? Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cryo to a client here or there. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. And we'll do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later. He calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Alright, so that's got a little turn in things. So that's what happens here. Actions one up two. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of just a sleeper. I'm feeling Drago's in trouble. More than he's letting on. To perform an action, click and drag your chosen action die to the slot. So six is a hundred percent chance for positive. Okay, so six is awesome. Five is can't be bad. Three and four is probably not bad. Doer or engineer. So what's risky mean? Safe or dangerous. Safe is no loss. Negative is cryo energy down. Ooh. Danger is negative condition. Neutral can be still get bombed. Good. Skills that we're using. Okay. Modifier. So if you've got a plus in the skill, you do better. Makes sense. And it's added to the die. Nice. So it's good enough. Alright. So if you're good at something, you can plug in. I can plug in a five and get a six. Okay. So these both tend to this. Okay, that's indoors. That's minus ones. So that's a bad idea. So I do that, I'll get a five. But I'm also bad at I've got a six though, so that's 100 percent positive. Let's do it. Because if I put it there, I'll get a minus one, so... Ugh. 
Oh, and it also affected the... Oh, okay. If you played Blades in the Dark, viewers, which is a really fun, open-minded, uh, uh, open-action tabletop game. Clocks are big. Progress. Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them and track your action and how they affect the world. Filling a clock, good or bad. Some clocks are cycle clocks. These clocks take themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed. Okay, so this happens no matter what, but because I've got a positive action, back in business. Gotcha. So I can do that again. Okay. Now if I leave, what happens? Ah, drives and navigation. Citizen Sleeper, you will unlock drives so you discover more about yourself and the world. Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives depending on which path you wish to take. You can track drives, and any track drive will place a yellow marker on location that will help you pursue your goal. Access your drive menu via the arrow button at the top left of the screen. You're now free to explore. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to recover a condition. Fill clocks to progress stories. Remember to end cycle your home when you're out of dice. Now wheel or WS to roll through the station and rotate the view. Okay, well, let's have a look. Oh, okay. Is it a huge circle? Oh yeah, but I guess it can only go so far right now. So we got here, shipyard. Okay, so that's one of my tracked. Put in the wet dock. Alright, so that's my survive drive. Might as well. Ooh. Danger. I wonder whether there are hundreds of people to ask, so yeah, you're probably looking like a wish love there, risky. Uh so what's this? 25, 50, 25. This is the same. Okay, well I must have put the three in there. Alright, let's roll that dice, viewers. Uh, ah Lost in the crowd, you struggle to keep a sense of direction. You sit in an alley exhausted with nowhere to go. Alright, let's try that again. Positive, plus local knowledge. Nice. Oh, that must be what I have to get done to... Uh, can I do anything else here? Oh, street food. Oh, wow, you're a burly dude. An opposing street food vendor, yeah. Memphis. Memphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand, idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red flag dressing. The smell is incredible. He watches as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with a bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chips rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handling over payment. Let's watch for him. Despite the queue, Amphis doesn't rush. He dresses each portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices before tossing them loosely together. Where do you get salad in some place like this? This we'll find out, maybe. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady in this process. After a while, the queue fades back into the crowd and Emphis sets down his metal bowl and looks up across the burner to see you, watching him. I can feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. Free sample? Uh, given my condition, not too proud. He gestures neatly. Come over. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. Now I'm getting hungry. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers. Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep and clear. A hard life. Lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. I can't do a deep voice, viewers. I'm sorry. Tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he gnaws as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, 
but also a sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems you tell him, like some dream that you once had, but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you're unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more. He smiles. But next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner's side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time, then, it's the moon. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms, each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin you walk away. As you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll all be back. Hey! New drive discovered. What drive? I'm getting no emphasis. Okay. Slum doctor. Low end gate. Passage into low end. Eh, yeah, let's maybe not. Let's... Let's maybe do some more work at Drago's shipyard. Wait, can I not? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah! Alright. Time for sleep. <laughs> Got some more cryo. That is one more tick, I think. I guess it was, it was the pause, though. Awesome. Okay, well. Help pay off Dragos' debt. Dragos pulled you out of the salvage and set you up. Perhaps you can repay his kindness. Eat it, this is stall. Okay. Nothing's complete, I imagine. Let's uh, head out of here. So that's one day down. with the cycle. Oh, okay. Oops. But I can't do anything, so I thought I was... Okay, so there's a cycle clock, but nothing's going down. It's even longer one. Okay. So, I don't... Dice will get right in here. Hab lock. Decaying habitation lock. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab lock. They have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few. Without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward in front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Let's not make eye contact with the enforcer. Oh. That was a bad call. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark, punctuated by the green indicators of stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light filtering through a far doorway. Screen with plastic sheeting beyond which blurred shapes move. And the slap of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you awake. Wait your turn, he growls. After a few moments, the figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Tashiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor to ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market's sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment, you're transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, comes a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folded bed. You make your way across the room. Sabine, the doctor in the bright market. Well, you can't call it a coat, it's a poncho for sure. You should cover the head. 
The vicar turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak, they blink, and in quick they regain their composure. Please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to open to put a case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. You hold a tender eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is flipped and business-like. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on the station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. I mean, this is sort of true? A few cycles. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. I might have missed the empathy on that. Nesson Arp doesn't like to see its proprietary technology loose. To prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly ejected with stabilizer, one which Essen Arp remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? How do you know this? They shift in their seat. You aren't the first sleeper I've encountered. You wait for more when they go back to their inspection. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you're unsure if they mean for the cool touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and SNARP has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this isn't used to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my benefactor, yet again. They're influential in the low end. They give me the space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yatagan has connections. Smugglers for the starboard belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations of Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but... I think we can do it. Why help me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. Okay. Well then, we've got a chance, viewers. It just sounds dangerous and expensive. Okay, looks like I'm done. So minus two energy, minus a condition. So that's going to cost me that die then, isn't it? station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment you weren't gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, and threads tugging to the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and extensions, as you feel your thoughts slipping their way down, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes that connect you. You see the station, no, you feel the station, like a web of texture in a smooth black hole. Find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers and then you try, in a moment of pulsiveness, to connect to them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating and eddying and gathering. As you do as you do things occur, as you do as you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. 
You notice a tugging feeling pulling at you consistently, as if it were a small child. And somehow it's pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored. And then it is gone. Yeah, oh, ooh, a pair of ones? Saves and play. Cool. Okay. Well, viewers, uh, my throat's getting a little sore. I didn't think there'd be this much talking or texting or text to speech. But if you're enjoying this, I certainly am. So we'll pick this up another time. Thanks for watching. Hope you had some fun. See you later.